want to thank you for joining us once again in our study of God's Word here at Understanding the Father's Heart Ministries. I'm evangelist and teacher Joseph A. Brown. I want you to know that we're blessed every time that you join us in our studies. And also you can uh, catch our studies at Sunday mornings at 9, at 6 to 10 a.m. at 92.7 KZJM or on the World Wide Web at www. 927kzjm.org where we are sharing the word of the living God. Dearly beloved, I want you to know our Lord is greatly to be served. Our Lord is the master of the universe. He is our very source and if we're going to do anything in this life we need to do it through Him, especially we who call ourselves Christians. But let us go before the Lord in prayer before we start our study. Father, we thank you and we praise you this day. We glorify you for your magnificence. We thank you for the great love that you have spread and shared amongst your children upon this earth. And even those, Father God, who have not yet been born again, Father God, you still love them. But Father God, there must be a choice to be made in their lives. And I pray today, Father, by your divine spirit, that you will draw them unto yourself. And Father, I ask that you will use my tongue today, my mind today, Father, that I might share something with Father, the listening audience, Father, that they might know what your will and your purpose is for their very existence. Father, we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and praise God. Hallelujah. I pray that the Lord has blessed you in a, a very special way. You know, during this past week, uh, sometimes incidents in one life can give them a message. And, and that's what I want to do today, just to share with you practically uh, something that the Lord has uh, put upon my heart and has been upon my very mind. And it, and it happens to be on the thought of speak life not death. Speak life, not death. And I want to take uh, my thought from uh, Proverbs 18 uh, and the 21st verse. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit uh, thereof. Uh, let me read that to you again. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. What is this word of wisdom for us in this particular uh, proverb? What is Solomon trying to get? across to you and I in the day that we live today when something was written so long ago. What is he actually getting at? I believe you can go in many directions with this particular uh, verse uh, of scripture. But I want to go in a particular place on this day. And I want to use the thought, speak life, not death. Amen? Glory be to the living God. Dearly beloved, I was uh, actually working on a job uh, uh, this past week, 
And uh, as I was working on this particular job, installing a window uh, at an apartment uh, complex, I saw this young lady that was walking up with her pushing one son in the stroller and the other following her. I heard her say some words to the young boy, and I heard him say words back to her. I didn't hear exactly what was uh, said, but I knew that it had some derogatory uh, 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 content within the particular words that she had said. Uh, but as they went into their apartment, um, I was... Um, going about doing my business and stalling this particular glass. And this young man, where I was doing the work at, came upstairs and he said to me, he said, some people uh, talk to their children any kind of way. Isn't that sad? And I, I heard what he said and it kind of stuck with me, uh, what he said, because I knew that uh, that young lady had said some things to that young boy uh, that was going to impact him for uh, the rest of his life. And I know sometimes we don't think that. We think sometimes we can say things to our children and we believe that somehow they forget because I believe because um, I look at it this way. Sometimes we say something to young people, uh, children for general. And those kids probably was about uh, maybe four and six years old. And we say things and we believe that they forgot what we said because the fact is that they continue to do the things that they were told not to do. And so we say to them again and sometimes it can aggravate you. Been there done that. But what I want to share with you today is something very practical uh, and very candid today. And I'm speaking mainly to the mothers, young mothers out there who have been given the burden and the joy of raising young boys especially. Young girls too, but young boys especially. And especially if you say that you are a Christian, if you say that you are a God-fearing person, then I believe most of all this message is uh, for you. Uh, speak life, not debt. Because you see, when you say certain things to your children, you have to remember that you're speaking into their lives. You are investing in their lives. And what you say to them, even though you believe that it goes in one ear and come out the other, dearly beloved, let me say to you, it does not. I can still remember some things that my dad said to me, my mother said to me. And thank God that they were positive things. Thank God that they spoke life into us rather than death to us. I had nine, uh, uh, eight other siblings uh, that grew up with me. And I can say to you today that yes, they spoke words to us and sometimes harsh words to us because we needed to hear it at the time. And especially myself, I knew that I got a lot of things said to me that because I was the one that had the hard head. Uh, and there was another brother uh, of mine, Russell, that had a hard head. And when a mom would say something to us and we would not listen, and then you heard those words, go get me a switch. <laughs> Praise be to God. If you, uh, I'm 60 years old, so if you that age or maybe just a little bit younger or even older, you probably have heard those particular words yourself. But I'm speaking into the life of the young 
women uh, because I know many of them have children that uh, is a struggle with and I know that there's a struggle but dearly beloved I'm saying to you uh, my sisters in Christ watch what you say to your children because they will remember it and it will become a part of their lives and what you say to them even though they do not really uh, uh, understand what you are saying, it will create a belief system in their lives. It will echo to them at times when they are feeling down and they are feeling out. Your very voice will cry out to them. You say, well, I don't believe that that is possible. I believe that once they get older, they'll forget the things that I said. They will forget the times that I curse at them. They will forget the times I said to them that they are no good and no count. I, they will forget the times that I said to my young son uh, that they will be just like their father, no count and no good. I can say to you today, they will not forget. They will remember what you said. And you have to remember, if you are a born-again believer, if you are a Christian, if you are practicing the Christian faith, then dearly beloved, I want to say to you today that God the Father holds you accountable for the way that you are treating your children or the way that you speak to them. I remember looking at a program just the other day. Uh, it was about uh, young women who were overweight. And one of the reasons that they were overweight had a lot to do with how they were spoke to and the environment that they lived in. But yet the mother and even one grandmother was calling uh, their grandchild a fat slob, a pig, one that is unable to control themselves. And I heard those young women say that, but at the same time, in my heart and in my spirit, I knew that those particular people probably was overweight themselves. And dearly beloved, we all have our struggles. I'm not condemning one who is overweight. I'm not condemning one who is obese. No, I'm not doing that. What I'm simply saying is this. Here was them condemning their children, condemning their grandchildren, but yet they were walking in the same state of obesity. Dearly beloved, Something is wrong with that picture. How can you speak those words to those children and at the same time, get this now, at the same time be walking in that same state that they're in and not recognizing that you are a very instigator and part of their very life. Dearly beloved, we are accountable before God. You know, the Lord God, Jesus Christ said, if you hurt one of these little ones, it would be better that a millstone was tied around your neck and you were tossed in the deepest portion of the sea. In other words, he was saying that you would, it would be better for you to have drowned. It would be better for you to have been dead than to hurt one of these little ones. Dearly beloved, we are accountable before God. And the words that you speak unto those young people, remember this, they will remember them. And they will remember them in times when they are in distress and life. It seems to be going wayward for them. And every time when it seems like they are progressing in their lives, 
like a crab inside a bucket that is trying to climb out. Another crab will grab it and pull it back in. And you know what will be grabbing those children and bringing them back to say that you are nothing, that you're no count, that you're no good? It will be the voice that you have put in their heads. It doesn't go away. I remember just the other day, I was driving down the road and I was eating, a, I believe it was a, a, a banana. And I rolled down my window because I was, I had finished and I was about to toss the peel out of the window as I was driving and the voice came to my head that said don't you dare throw that out the window that was the voice of my dad now that's when I was maybe five years old six years old that he told us that I can still remember it today riding in the back seat of that 57, that yellow 57 Chevy that the Lord had blessed our family with on our way to grandma's house with the windows down. And I, one of us was about, one of my brothers or I was about to throw something out of the window. And I remember that. But I remember all the positive things that they said and invested in my life. I remember those things. And so what I'm saying to you today is what the scripture says here. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. You can either speak life unto your children or you can speak death to your children. You have a choice. What a powerful word here, dearly beloved, to understand this, that you as a person have the power of life and death in your very tongue. Now maybe you have been brought up a certain way. Maybe you were cursed at. Maybe you were told that you would never amount to anything. Maybe you were told you were a fat slob that you are no good for nothing. Maybe you were told those very same words and maybe those very same words are what you're speaking because into your children's life because you believe that somehow it has made you right and it has made you into the person that you are today. But who you are today Think about it. I remember one of the young women on this particular program that I saw uh, the other night laughed at a video that her grandmother had sent her. And it on that video it said that uh, she called uh, her granddaughter a fat slob and a pig and that she would be nothing because she was never anything at all. And the, the granddaughter uh, heard it and she just laughed at it as though, as though it was funny. And her personal trainer had an opportunity to, to listen to it also. And to that personal trainer, those words were vulgar, those words almost made her come to tears. I'm not talking about the granddaughter who the words were uh, directed at, but I'm talking about the, the woman who was actually training this particular woman. It nearly brought tears to her eyes. And she told the young, the, the grand, she, she told the lady that she would be training the granddaughter, we're not going to listen to this any longer. 
And you ought not be laughing about this. And the granddaughter said, well, but they say that all the time. And, and, and you know, I just look at it as being funny. It's, it's just the way they talk. And the person I'm trying to say, well, this is going to cease. While I'm working with you, I want to put positive words in your life. This is not good for you. And so you will not be having contact with them until you complete the training that you needed. And dearly beloved, for the first time, that young granddaughter saw what was being put in her life was something negative and it was not positive and it was not something that she should have laughed about because literally it was gnawing at her very existence and dearly beloved I say to you today this woman was probably 23, 24 years old but yet she was carrying the pain and she had learned how to laugh about it as though it meant nothing at all. But it did because it was part of the reason why she was in the condition mentally and physically that she was in. But praise be to the living God that she recognized in herself that there was more to her than what her, parent, her, what her grandmother and what her mother was telling her. And, you know, and, and she had such a great talent and she uh, wanted to be an opera singer, had a beautiful voice and had stopped singing and had stopped pursuing that in her life. The thing that she loved because of how she looked at herself. Dearly beloved, you have more power in your tongue than you have in anything else. Now I believe in training up a child the way they should go. And according to the word, they will not depart from it. And I do believe that if you spare the rod... You ruin the child. But at the same time, we have to do it in a loving way. Now, I had my son call me uh, the other uh, day, and we were talking. Uh, uh, well, one of my sons, well, my oldest son, Reginald, called me. We were talking. And I hear that from him, and I hear that also from uh, Tremaine, my younger son. And how many times they share with me. Because that mom had gone to be with the Lord. And how many times they shared with me that how we had trained them, how we had taught them, and how we had lived before them had actually guided their lives and how grateful and thankful that they were. I mean, there are times that it bring tears to my eyes because many times I did not think at the moment or at the time when, when uh, we were parenting them, that we were always doing the right thing. Because you don't know sometimes. But little beloved, sometimes we don't know if we're doing the right thing. But let me say this to you. Now hear me good. We may not know if we're doing it the right way all the time. But one thing is for sure. We know when we're doing it the wrong way. Because we don't feel good about it. We don't feel right about it. And nor would we want someone to do that unto us. If we are treating our children in an insufficient manner. We have to realize that dearly beloved. We have to know that. And as the word of God says. Look what it says on the, on, on the latter part of that scripture. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. If you speak death unto your children, you will eat the fruit thereof. If you speak life unto um, your children, you will eat the fruit of thereof. In other words, whatever they become, it will be the fruit that you have invested 
in their lives and they will be exactly what you have called them to be in this earth. That's why uh, we can, myself and my brothers and uh, uh, sisters, how we honor our mother now because of the things that she did for us. Yes, we didn't know exactly uh, what they were doing at the time they were disciplining us. We thought it was for to hurt us, but really it was to build us up. And that's the same thing that I did with, and my wife did with our sons. And so I'm very grateful and thankful because now when they say those things, even though I don't, I, I can't really recall everything, but I know by looking at their lives that God has blessed them because of the words that was put into their life, deposited in them. And dearly beloved. Watch the words that you speak. Speak life and not death. Amen. Praise be to the living God. I pray that the Lord has blessed you in some way. And that you will think about it. And pray about it. Before you begin to discipline your children. And think that somehow you're doing it the proper way. When you're cursing them and condemning them. Because one day you will eat the fruit thereof. Of what you have created with your very tongue. Amen. The Lord bless you. The Lord direct you. The Lord give you hope and joy and peace in your life. And give you the strength to face every challenge that you might have in this life. Be blessed in Jesus' name.